In my last video, I talked about data from a Gallup survey that showed how people view certain professions as being very honest and ethical or not so much. Pretty important data there. This week, we're going to look at some different data from the Edelman Trust Barometer Survey and see how this data affects you in your sales role as well. Stay tuned. So here we are at edelman.com, specifically looking at information related to their 2023 Trust Barometer Survey. What you should know about this data is that it's global. I know that many of the viewers of this channel are in countries other than the US, so I hope that you understand that this should be helpful to you too. Their methodology is to survey people with online interviews. They conducted them in November of last year. They talked to 32,000 people across 28 countries. So this is an exhaustive survey that I think is useful as you consider how to navigate a world grappling with trust issues. So let's take a look at some initial data on this page, and then we're gonna look at the report and one specific stat there that I think you'll like. Economic optimism collapses. I'm sharing this with you because you know that there are people that are feeling like they may not be in the best financial shape right now. It says here that people now fear for their economic future without a trust safety net. Only 40% of respondents say they and their families will be better off in five years. That's a 10 point decline in just one year. That's really significant. So when you meet prospects, know that they may be those people that feel that they are not going to be in a better position five years from now. How does that affect their buying behavior? How does that affect their mood towards the economy and risk, right? Risk is always present in the buying process. The prospect is considering the risk of moving forward with you or the risk of staying with the status quo. So you're always helping your prospect to navigate that decision of, do I wanna take on the risk of trying something new to solve my problems? Or do I wanna just stick with the problems that I have because I think that'll actually be easier to deal with than the risk of going forward. So consider that when you have conversations with your prospects as well. Now let's take a look at a specific set of data inside the Trust Barometer Report, which I think will be helpful to understand as well. So now we're looking at a page within the Trust Barometer Survey, which you can download for free from the Edelman.com website. I highly recommend that you do because I'm just looking at a few data sets here that I think will be useful for you to understand in interpreting them. But there's so much more here, 71 pages. So here you see the headline, Social Fabric Weekends. Percent who say, 65% of respondents say that the lack of civility and mutual respect today is the worst that I have ever seen. Imagine that, a lack of civility and mutual respect. Well, in the sales process, we seek to always have mutual respect. I believe in level playing field, which is the concept that you're on an equal plane with the, with the buyer, that you're not below the buyer, you're not above the buyer for sure, but you're on a level playing field. And there should be mutual respect, but that may start with you to have respect for the prospect, respect for their role, respect for the organization, the industry, respect for their needs and the challenges that they have, and to respect the relationship that you are seeking to have with that person and being civil throughout the process, right? Never being unduly um, difficult to work with, being a source of pressure, uh, being a source of um, being disingenuous. If you're going to work with a statistic as troubling as this, you're going to have to work extra hard to be someone that the person feels they can trust, respect, and appreciate going through the buying process with. The book, The Go-Giver, is one that I've recommended and given to many salespeople. I think it would help you if you feel like you could increase your civility and mutual respect and just have a different 
kind of approach and mindset to the sales process. So keep that recommendation in mind if you haven't read that book before, it's terrific. Also consider how can you increase your level of civility and mutual respect in your sales process with prospects. Now we're gonna take a look at one more data set. Take a look at this headline, Family Businesses Most Trusted. Interestingly, 67% of people trust family-owned businesses. Makes sense, right? That's probably the way you feel too. It's certainly the way I feel as long as I respect the family and that family that owns the business is civil and respects their customers, which is usually the case. 67%. After that, it's privately held, privately held, meaning that it's not a publicly traded organization. And then after that, 55%, and then state owned, 50%. Where do you find yourself? Which of these four organizations are you working with and for? If you're working for a state owned organization, you may find it more difficult to establish trust with your prospect versus if you work for a family owned business, I think you'll find it much easier. And you may actually want to weave that into the conversation. Let your buyer know that you represent a family owned business. In recent conversation that I had with one of my clients who works for a family owned business, I mentioned to him that in his sales pitch that I would weave that in. I would state that I work in a business with my mother because I think a woman-owned business, a family-owned business, a mother-son combination, that increases trust even more. So leverage what you have to increase trust in the other person, knowing that we're in a challenging situation right now where trust is not at an all-time high. People are feeling uncertain about their economic environment, and you might want to use whatever you can to increase mutual respect, bring civility into the buying process, and leverage the trust that you already have. All right, let's wrap this up. I wanna answer a question which might be in your mind right now. Why do I share videos like this? The reason that I do is because I believe that what's happening generally in society impacts you and your role. So macro trends are important to understand because they affect our success in sales transactions with people who are feeling the way the statistics share. So understand these things are actually happening. Seek to build trust, be civil, have lots of respect for the buyer and the process. The more you work on your character, the better you're positioned to win long-term. Of course, sales process and specific sales techniques such as objection handling are important. And I talk about those in my videos, my online course, et cetera. But I also want you to understand what are trends affecting your work and taking the long-term view and understanding these trends will help you to be successful over time and maintain that success. So I hope you agree with me. If you'd like to learn more about my sales coaching and training, please visit my website, buildandbalance.com. If you have questions about sales, email me at michael at buildandbalance.com and I'll probably answer them in a future video or I may just email you back. If you'd like to learn more about my online sales course, which has a 45 day money back guarantee and seven weeks packed with content to help you have a better year this year, lots of tools, worksheets, techniques, and tips that you will improve by studying, take a look. The information is available at buildandbalance.com. Please like this video if it's helped you, share it with others, and of course, subscribe to the channel and comment below if I can answer anything for you. Thank you very much.